We want to welcome all of His Glory Ministry from east to west to north to south. We are going to bring you a special a week in the lens of the Bible, the things that are going on in the world, uh, recapping this last week in uh, world events, United States events, how prophecy is being fulfilled, and uh, how God is shaking up the earth for this last revival. Uh, really, five different areas we're going to talk about today, the continuing of the U.S. scandals, how this is going to be uh, expanding even deeper, uh, the seven pillars of the mountains of what the world thinks are their idols uh, that God is exposing as we speak, the nation of Israel, which is the center of all things, and God is putting, putting his protective hand on the nation of Israel, the United States and the blessings that is, goes back to scripture, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. United States government has stepped forward and put the embassy recognizing that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the nation of Israel. And we're seeing blessing coming to the United States economy because of this. Uh, the Atlanta Fed just announced that uh, they believe that the economy could grow upwards of 4.7% in the second quarter which is absolutely smoking. We see African-American unemployment is at an all-time low. We see a Latino uh, employment at an all-time low. And we see that the, uh, in, uh, the index of, of, of prosperity is at a 17-year 17, uh, 17 high. Many, many great things. The unemployment as a whole is at 3.8%. This has to do with God's blessing of the United States of America. And the last is the heartbreaking of today's church. The church is going through an exposure. And we'll go into depth of all of these five each categories to give you a week in the Bible, uh, a week in the lens of the Bible, why it's happening today. First of the U.S. scandals that we've mentioned. Uh, for those following uh, His Glory Ministry, we, you uh, will well know that we were given a prophetic word back in March 1st of 2017. The Lord said it would be the biggest scandals, plural, in the United States government, in the history. This was well before anybody came out with anything like we see the house of cards falling today. Other words coming after that, he said it would, 2018 would be the year of the boomerang. And if you follow the Sean Hannity show, he's taken on that mantra as the year of the boomerang. Well, the Lord told us that uh, uh, back in December of 2017, that 2018 would be the year of the boomerang. What the people thought were gonna happen is gonna come back on them. And so God has told us that it's the year of the boomerang. Also, the Lord said, this United States scandal of government corruption, spying, uh, doing things in the dark, that there will be a light shining on this. And he said it would expand. This goes back to about July or June, we had a prophetic word that the scandal would go further than the United States and it would be involving the world scandal and that there would be government people at high up positions in other countries that would be affected. Just this week, we have now seen real life proof to show that at least seven other nations were involved in this uh, Russia and the spying and these illegal wiretapping of a political uh, campaign. Unfortunately, many people throughout the world are uh, in the United States are taking a, uh, uh, a political view of this. Remember, right here at His Glory, we're telling you what the Word of God says. We're telling you what, what the Lord Most High is telling you, us. And that is not about left or right. It's not about political party. This nation was founded under God. A principle of our Constitution in the United States of America is God first. The fundamentals of Judeo-Christian values are what put our forefathers into country. And this political scandal is not only going to hit the Democrats, but it's also going to hit people in the Republican Party as well. He's exposing all dark. Just this week, I got another prophetic word that the birth pains are speeding up in the spiritual realm. And God's light is going to start shining brighter and brighter on the darkness. And the exposure is going to be coming faster and faster and faster like no other time in the history. Everything God has told us so far has come true. And it's the year of the boomerang. Watch for the boomerang. We're seeing that many high-level officials now are turning against each other. And this uh, it will be the biggest scandal, not only in United States history, but it's going to expand into world history. As we said, now there are seven countries that are impacted by this 
that have political candidates that were a part of the scandal. Whether you want to call it an informant, whether you want to call it a spy, whatever you call it, it is, uh, it, it is ugly and it was done for political motives. And the light is going to shine on the dark and those who thought they were going to get away with it, it's going to come back on them. Again, this is not just Democrat. These people are not calling themselves a Democrat or calling them a Republican because of ideology. They're doing it for power, greed, money. This is what it's all about. This is the spirit of Jezebel. And God is exposing the spirit of Jezebel. So whether you're Republican or Democrat, you've done things in the dark, God is going to show the light and it's it being exposed. And as we said in our prophetic word this, word this last week, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. But there is no run to, where to hide. The birth pains are speeding up and God is going to shine his light on the darkness. As we said before, the Lord is going to raise up a remnant of godly people throughout the government. We go to the seven pillars of the mountains of society. We're seeing that in the movie industry. We're seeing the vileness of comedians that are turning on uh, political parties and calling people just unbelievable racial names, racial slurs, calling people this un incredibly horrible things. Whether you're left or right, the vileness has gotten out of control. We even see people who call themselves uh, pastors or bishops getting in the fray and calling people racial slurs. This is not of Christ. Christ is exposing in these times of darkness that the light is going to shine. These birth pains are speeding up and everything is going to get exposed faster and faster. And God's light is going to shine on these seven pillars. Remember we said uh, the, the movie industry, the TV industry, Harvey Weinstein was just put in, uh, uh, was con con not convicted, but was uh, indicted this last week of all people you never thought that would ever happen. We're seeing the society of all pillars of the mountain that God, that people put as their own idols and gods. God is bringing down what has happened in the darkness. And this is going to continue to go. Remember we said that the Lord is going to uh, expose, this was a prophetic word about six to eight months ago, that God is going to uh, expose insurance companies. And specifically, uh, health insurance companies and insurance companies that have done things in the dark with the United States government. That's the next thing that's going to hit. That's going to be a huge, huge cover up. And it's going to expose things that they have done with the government in dark to hide horrible things. Watch for this to, to happen. We see a little bit of it starting to happen in California a couple months ago as we per, had a prophecy a few, uh, a few months ago. And when we also said, watch for the pedophile ring in, in, uh, in Hollywood and TV, and also it will have ties to the U.S. government. And God told us this eight months ago, and we're seeing the first fruits of that to start to happen. There's some, some TV stars that have been indicted for pedophile ring. Uh, there's more that are on the precipice of being indicted. There's more that are being hidden by the government because they don't want it to be exposed that are about ready to be exposed. And this will be Pandora's box. It will open up a huge pedophile ring that will come out and will have ties to the US government and will have ties to movie stars, TV stars, and people in the entertainment industry. God is shining his light on this. This will be the next thing that comes. Watch for this because the events are starting to happen right before we speak, uh, right before our very eyes. Again, God prophesied to us this six to eight months ago. And this is beginning to happen exactly the way he said it. We mentioned the U.S. economy. This is the blessing that God has given to people, given to people throughout the, the, the history of the world based on the commitment and how they treat Israel. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. That goes to the nation of Israel. How the nations of the earth treat God's beloved city, Jerusalem, and his beloved country, Israel. There will be a blessing and there will be a curse based on if you do not do that. We're seeing the United States economy take off like no time in recent memory. It is exploding and there's no question. The reason behind this is not because of a president. It's because of the most high God. He is fundamentally changing the heart and blessing them because we stood up and moved the embassy to Jerusalem, the eternal capital of Israel forever. And we acknowledged it. Many presidents for many years have said we would do it but never had the courage to do it. And that now we have done it and we are seeing blessings. 
we're seeing that the U.S. oil and natural gas, we're uh, on the precipice of being the largest producer of oil and natural gas. This is before we open up some of the other areas that were ready uh, that are not ready yet, meaning Anwar and some of the offshore uh, uh, opportunities we have. The United States is going to be a superpower in energy, and the United States economy is cooking on all cylinders, and all glory goes to God. No matter what race, tie, uh, color your skin, God is a loving God, and he wants them all to come in. So we all have to unite as Americans and take this and get our country back and put prayer back into this nation built by the one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, like our forefathers did, because he will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Look what's happening in the Middle East. We're on the precipice of the Psalm 83 war. We had uh, the biggest, or Israel had the biggest uh, um, attack since 2014. This last week, over 100 rockets went in from the Gaza Strip into Israel. So we're looking at Psalm 83 for the first time in the history that's never happened before. And we're seeing the Lord hold on and protect the nation of Israel. One of our prophetic words last week is God says that they're going to try to hurt my beloved Israel. That's Psalm 83. And the Most High God is gonna protect his beloved because his right hand is not too short to save Israel. Bible prophecy being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And Jesus said the birth pains, these things would start to happen quicker and quicker and quicker. And the Lord Most High said this week that the birth pains in the spiritual realm are speeding up. So in this time that there's gonna be great trials and tribulations and the world will be melting down, inside this will be a great revival of those who are called by the name of the Most High God and love him and trust him through his son, Jesus Christ. We're gonna have an explosion of a revival just like the first church. It'll be the greatest harvest that the, the, the world has ever seen. And we're starting to see these, the, the characteristics of this at His Glory Ministry. It's spreading throughout every single country in the world. We have close to 6 million followers, 1.1 million on Facebook, and it is touching literally every single nation under the sun, and we're ready for the great harvest. God said, it's time. It's time for this to happen. Brings us to the last of our categories, the church. The church today is changing dramatically, as we've seen that 76% of church uh, uh, attendance is dropping in the United States. People look at it as a church, as a building. The church has never been a building. God has always made the church us. Who is the head of the church, as Paul tells us? Christ is the head, we are the body. The holy of holies of the church, built after the tabernacle of the Most High God, is our heart. And we are the church and we are to move out. Remember in, the, in Pentecost, when Paul and the disciples, and they start spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ from east to west to north to south, exactly the way Christ said, spread thy gospel. Look in the gospels. Jesus has never once built a church, never build a beautiful church, never build new windows, never have a chili cook-off to have a better church. We are the church and we need to become mobile. We need to be spreading the love of Jesus Christ and get this last harvest. It's not about church programs. It's about how many people in these latter days do we plant the seed of knowing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God doesn't want buildings. He wants hearts. He wants souls that love him with all their heart, their soul, and their mind. Never once did Jesus say, go build me a beautiful church. No, he said, you are the church and I am the center, I am the head. Go out and preach the gospel to every creature, to east, to west, to north, to south. That is the commission that the Christ, the Lord Most High, called us to do. Remember the days of the Apostle Paul when they built the church and they spread the church. The church was the people. They met in homes. And we're starting to see the United States of America and China and Iran and some of the other areas which were persecuted. It was, Jay, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was prophesied many, many years ago that the last church would go underground. The last church would turn in to be the church of, of, um, of going back into the houses as it was in Pentecost. When you read the epistles of the Apostle Paul, when you see the church of Philadelphia, the church of, of Ephesia, uh, or Corinth, all these churches were in people's houses. They weren't a physical building. God has never said, I'm restricted in a physical building. 
Remember the woman on the uh, woman at the well came to Jesus and said, "You Jews worship in the temple. We Samaritans worship up on this hill." And Jesus said, "Certainly there will be a time where you will worship no, in neither place. You'll worship in the heart because the church is mobile. The church is everywhere. Wherever we go." We're bringing the church with us because God has always made the church us. We are united in one ecclesia, one church. And it breaks my heart that there's so many churches that have their functions and the wrong, the, the wrong priorities. They're not putting in an outreach of bringing people souls. They're not focusing on the elderly that are the widows and orphans exactly the way the Lord said. We really have three priorities left in these end days of the great harvest. One, most importantly, what Jesus told us to do, preach the gospel from east to west to north to south to every creature. That has to be done for the great harvest. Two, take care of my orphans and take care of my widows that have no support. Those are the three functions that we need to do as a, as a church, not a beautiful building. We had a partner uh, that broke my heart this week, this weekend. We're so wrapped up in the jealousy of what someone, one church, uh, one church pastor got a car and then they wanted a car. It's not about having a car. It's not about having things. It's about having the love of Jesus Christ. The church needs to wake up. The church needs to go back to its roots. And as, as it said in our seven letters to the seven churches and remember the first love, the first love is Jesus Christ. And we are the church. Don't worry about pretty buildings. Don't worry about what your church has and cars and all these things and kitchens and basketball courts and all this. We're called to do one thing. As Jesus said, preach the gospel. We need to have the church wake up and outreach to all the people around the world. So know, they have to know the living God in their heart because the Christ is what it's all about. The days are coming, their days are few and we all we have to do is finish the race and let them know the seed of Christ, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. It's not about financial. If it was about financial, the apostle Paul would add a beautiful building. He never did. Paul lived in a tent. He made tents. He didn't know where his next meal was gonna be, but he trusted in the most high God. And miracles and signs and wonders followed Paul everywhere he went. The same with the apostle Peter. Same with all the disciples who listened to Jesus Christ as he went up and created his church, the Ecclesia, and the Holy Spirit came down. They weren't working about buildings. They were going out because they are the church. They were the church and we are the church and the church of Christ. He is the head and we are the body. Is going mobile and we are to go out and preach that good hope, the good word, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life through eternal life comes through the shepherd's door and the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're praying for every church, that, we, that every pastor that is leading the sheep are leading the sheep the right way. Reevaluate, what are we doing? Why are we opening our doors? What is our purpose? Our purpose needs to be built on the living word. Our purpose needs to be built on what Jesus told us to do. We know we're in the end days because the Bible's telling us. We know the birth pains are happening. What do we do? Do we panic? Do we run in a corner? Or do we go and, and, and live our life like luxuries and try to get more for the church, more buildings, more buildings? I prayed to the Lord not too long ago. I said, Lord, what, what do you want? He says, I don't need any more churches. I got enough physical buildings. I want the heart of the people. David, my son, he's calling me out. David, my son, be my spokesperson. Tell my people I want to have a love relationship with them. I don't want them to be a building. Building is a building. Love is in the heart and I meet them in the heart and I am churching with them wherever they go. Remember, when you accept Christ in you, the Lord most high, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are indwelled in you and you are the church. You are the body and Christ is our leader. Christ is the head. And we have to preach the good news all over the world so that the people have hope to know that when their days are done, they have eternal life with the Most High God. Church, wake up, because God is shaking the church. He's shaking it dramatically. Some are going to fold. Many scandals are coming out. We've seen more church scandals in the last three weeks than I've seen in years. Because the Lord, that was another prophecy. He says, I'm shaking my church, and I'm going to expose the light on the darkness. 
I'm going to expose the light on the greed. I'm going to expose the light and the sexual perversion that are going in, what they call my church, which they call in their building. No, I will expose it. There's never been a time in the history of the world that the Lord is saying, come to me, daughter, come to me, son, know who I am. Know me through my son, my word. Know what truth is, because there's a lot of lies and deception, a lot of fake news, and a lot of fake word out there. And this is the only hope we have is in the living Christ to know his word is truth. And we trust in his word. And we have to know his word to trust his word. And we have to know his word to know where the false comes out. So I'm telling the church, we're calling the church out. It's time because the most high God is shining his light. The sexual scandals, the things that are done in injustice, the things done for greed, for more planes or more other things instead of going out and spreading the gospel kingdom to every single person. That's what the Lord has called us to do. And we pray, we pray for the church, that the church wakes up, the true church, which is one church, it's called the Ecclesia in Greek. In the Greek, it's one church, it's always been one church. It's united in Christ, not united in Christ plus anything else. It's Christ, period. He is the head, we are the body, he is in us, he's with us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he who is in you is stronger than he is in the world. So we have, to, we have to make sure we have our priorities straight in these latter days because everything the Lord has told us, every prophecy is starting to be fulfilled right before our very eyes. And as Jesus told us in Matthew 24, the birth pains are speeding up. And that's exactly what the Lord said this last week. The birth pains are speeding up and I am going to shake, shake the nations. I'm going to shake, shake the church. I am going to shake, shake the U.S. government. I'm going to shake, shake all the pillars that people call their own gods. And I'm going to show the world who I am through signs and wonders. But these signs and wonders, you can be fooled if you don't have your heart on the Lord. You have to know his word. And it's time for the one church to stand up and preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And we have to go after every single soul, desperately aching, to have every single soul to come in to know the living Christ. And we're united no matter what your color is, whether you're black or white or Asian or whatever your color is, we're all created by the most high God. And when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, no matter our skin, our blood is all red and it's sin nature and he's washed it away. And we become brothers and sisters of the most high God. Let's get rid of the racial divide. Let's give the things that are tearing our nation and tearing our world apart. They're not of Christ. Christ is love. We need to put love first and start planting the seeds because we love our brothers and sisters. And we want every single person to know who the living Christ is because we want them to be hear the words, well done, my faithful servant, and come into eternal life. Time is short. We pray, we pray, we pray, we pray that the church wakes up and the true church steps up. And the true church is the one that Jesus called the elect. Not elect because they were special. Elect because of the heart. God elected them. God elected those who know his word. And that's what the church of Philadelphia is. You never denied my name. You never denied the name of Christ. You never denied my word. You have to know his word so you can't deny it. People need to pick up their Bible and you followed and you did everything obedient. And the church, the true church has been persecuted. The true church has been persecuted, but the Lord most high is gonna shake and shake and shake. And the light of Christ is gonna come up. And this remnant that is, is the elect is gonna shine the light all over the world. And the world is gonna know the living God is responding because these people will glow. And supernatural things that are of biblical, that are of the Bible, are going to happen around, around them and through them because Christ is the center, Christ is the head, and he wants you to meet you at the Holy of Holies of the heart today. We pray that this week in, through a Bible lens is a blessing to you. And the church needs to wake up. The church needs to get back to the basics. And the basics are very simple. Preach the gospel, because that's what Jesus told us to do. Plant a seed to every single soul. Time is running, time is, time is short. And look at the news every day, the world is shaking. So we have three choices to make. 
continue as the church like we're going to worship in a building like a country club and not do what the Lord wants us to do. Change the word of God to, to, to placate whatever we feel at this particular time. You're not a threat to Satan. Satan doesn't care. Satan wants you to do that. Or you just deny it, go through the world and live for the world. Or the third and the only, you stand up on the word of God and you stand up on his truth and everything he says to tells us to do and to honor him through the precepts and commandments. Jesus says, you love me, accept me into your heart and follow me. And it also says, if you love me, you will obey me. People forget that. They forget that Jesus says love is obedience. You can't love Jesus Christ and love his word if you don't read his word. You can't love Jesus Christ and love his word if you don't follow his word and if you're not obedient to his word. He's looking for truth in these end days. He's looking for those who are going to step up to be the church of Philadelphia. Are you? Are you? Have you been saved? And if you've been saved, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to preach the gospel? Are you going to plant the seed? Or are you going to go in a building and just continue the ways and let Satan deceive, distract, delay? Satan doesn't care as long as you're distracted, delayed, or deceived. But the church will not be, the true church will not be distracted, deceived, or delayed. Because well, the time is now, the shofar is being blown for the remnant of his glory to step up in his light and preach the gospel to every single brother and sister all over the world, to every tribe, tongue, and nation will all be united through Christ. He is, the, he is our binding blood because he took it to the cross for us. We pray for each and every one of you and we pray that the Lord Jesus Christ touches you in your heart today and you know the living Christ and he is with you always. And that now that you accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, that you're obedient to him and you go out and be obedient to what he says to do. Plant the seed, plant the seed of why God through Jesus Christ changed your life. May God bless each and every one of you and your families. God bless you.